let's talk today about eight very doable, very actionable steps you can implement right away to highly simplify your life. And since it's the end of summer and maybe you don't have so much time for a huge ongoing change, starting small will help you turn these steps into habits you can stick to and you can always continue building up from. Sometimes in order to understand what we want, we need to let go of what we don't. This is minimalism in a nutshell to me, a way to edit and curate my life. I believe that the real change can only happen once we come face to face with whatever it is the problem that keeps us in this stagnant state. Change is hard because it requires first off awareness. And sometimes this is the hardest part for some of us. Admitting that some of our habits maybe are unhealthy and need a change. Some areas of our homes need change, our relationship with money and so on. It is that honest talk with ourselves the reality check that creates awareness and allows us to see clearer the path that we're on and enables us to carve a new one. But we need to sit down and assess our current situation before we try and come up with any plans or we won't go too far. I like to do this by putting my roadblocks on a paper. I found this by far the most therapeutic, most effective way to recognize where I'm lacking, where I'm making mistakes, and where I can use some improvements. You can do this reflection or reset at any time of the year, and since I got into this so much needed habit, I like to do this at the beginning of every month. I simplified my routines a lot in the past 14 years, little by little, until I found rhythms that work for me and my family. But the main change was realizing that after taking care of basic daily chores, the rest is probably mostly unnecessary work. When it's about trying to keep up with our homes filled with all the extra. So the way I now see routines is about effortlessly helping my future self. I use my morning routine to get my home and myself ready for a successful evening and my evening's routines to live as much as possible organized for the next morning to create a smoother day. In the morning, I make my bed, I leave folded pajamas by the pillows, I know what's for dinner by the time it's breakfast, I do one load of laundry I picked up the night before, and I clean as I go. This way I won't be prone to procrastinate when it's the end of the day, and the last thing on my mind is doing the dishes, so putting the laundry away or picking up. In the evening, I take a shower as a shortcut to use the time the next morning for my skincare or enjoying my coffee while it's still hot. I know what's for breakfast. I look at the calendar and I do a brain dump to better prioritize my next day. Keeping your meals simple is actually very empowering in my experience. Since I've embraced a more holistic lifestyle, simple food means better food, whole food food. So I find it very liberating and, like I said, very empowering instead of restrictive. I now don't have a problem anymore keeping the same breakfast five days out of the week and I just switch up the toppings. It's healthy, tasty and super simple and it takes away a big pressure off my shoulders. I can go on autopilot, especially on those a bit more chaotic mornings. And as an Italian, I know that the secret to delicious meals It's simple, few fresh ingredients, so keeping my dinners on a short rota is what helps me feed my family of eight also on a budget. And batch cooking, toppings like ragu, tomato sauce, soups and broths, knowing that you have something nourishing you can simply heat up, eases up our job. Keep at least one room of your home clutter free, or at least one area. From being your purse, your entryway closet, to what for me is the easiest one my bedroom. It has to be our sanctuary, not another energy draining room with its attached silent to-do list. To me that means absolutely no TV, no extra decor, no piles of clothes scattered on the floor or on the bed, or any item that can engage my mind and doesn't inspire rest instead, making it a breeze to maintain or to deep clean. So I welcome plants as a means of decor also as great air purifiers, non-toxic candles to limit the exposure to LED lights or just blue lights, and inspiring reading, fresh linens, and my journal in case I need to jot down something. This way I don't have to keep it on my mind affecting my sleep trying to remember it. 
embrace the now and the flow of life for the season you're in. Because to its core, this is what romanticizing your life is. It's savoring the moment, the imperfect moment you're in. When we choose to focus on what we have, we can much easier let go of perfectionism, which in reality is only a projection, an idea we made up in our minds of what something or somebody, even ourselves, should look like. Realizing that there are never perfect solutions, only trade-offs, helps putting things into perspective when choosing your heart. And this is something that can be applied in every area of our life And it's actually thanks to this concept that I was able to stop working full time and being able to stay home. You'll be surprised at how much more you get to be when you clear up your schedule, your kids' extra activities, your business in general, and enjoy some old fashioned entertainment. Most of the time we feel stressed and anxious because we do very little of what our body and soul and mind need to strive and recharge. Something so simple that somehow we never seem to be finding time for. There is time in nature. Time alone. And as a mom to six kids, to me that means slow time with them. You won't believe the amount of memories and trips we were able to squeeze this year alone since we bought a cheap camping tent. The best investment ever. No toys, no screens. Only good food, good company, and the beauty all around us. The idea of getting ready in the morning, in particular by simplifying and translating into what's true to me and the seasonal life, I mean, this idea I had in my mind about getting ready and dressed in the morning meant as a mom. We all know the benefits we can reap by doing that, yet it felt always so hard to see it as an act of self-care. Mainly now recognize it because of the decision fatigue I was faced by every time I opened my closet. Investing time in getting to know what my true style is, was true to my lifestyle, meant I could stop robbing myself of this wonderful gift that comes with femininity. A practical way I was able to simplify this daily routine was by implementing a style uniform. So that I still felt as if I had a good variety of clothes to choose from while keeping it minimal and easy. So find what are those pieces you truly love and feel like you when you wear them and start from there. And I use the same products for cleaning and moisturizing my skin, whether it is morning or evening. Limiting your options helps you stick to routines instead of skipping them because we eliminate the decision fatigue. Clear your feedback. Think of your digital world as your life vision board. You want it to be inspiring, energizing, beautiful. And I don't mean unrealistic with that. I mean clear of anything that weighs you down and keeps you farther away from living the life you envision or the long-term goals you would love to see accomplished. This one in particular should be probably the first one on anybody's list as far as importance. It is the one area that we for sure have total control over, yet we barely use self-control or mindfulness as we scroll and let our attention, our minds, seeing things, hearing things, and desiring things we probably never ever consciously give in to. Paying attention and only consume what brings you life. If you're on a debt-free journey, for example, consider following like-minded, encouraging people that can help you stay on track. Remember that this is your life and what you do with your time is how you decide to live. Being conscious about your mental being is probably the first step to have better control over your life. Having less mental clutter reflects into better choice making healthier you and relationships. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to catch you in the next video. I'm going to go through my autumn capsule minimalist wardrobe. I'm looking so much forward to hearing your comments and I'll see you all soon. Stay well. Bye bye.